Namaste. I am Gloria Grace Rand, and I want to welcome you to the Live, Love, Engage podcast. And today I've got a guest with me who is really an accomplished gentleman. He, I don't know, I'm not quite sure what he hasn't done in his life, but I will, I will share with you some of the highlights. This man has been uh, amazing, all of the different things he's done. His name is Timothy Rickey. And just, just to go over a few of the things, he became an entrepreneur, um, started a company called Tidy Made Services with only $13.68, I guess, invested and it grew to do millions of dollars in sales. So just, just a little something that he just done. Um, he's also been an author and trainer for Tony Robbins. He's trained over 1,500 speakers, authors, employees, and entrepreneurs. And two of his speakers even won, uh, reached the World Championship at the Toastmasters International Speech Contest. So that's pretty amazing, too. Um, not only that, he is founder and president of Ricky Media. He's a keynote speaker. He is a trainer. He uh, lectures at universities. And if that isn't enough, let's see, he's also a musician. He's a former Elvis impersonator um, and author of 19 books. So. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's really, it's a shame that you just are slacking off and <laughs> not doing a whole lot. <laughs> My goodness. Welcome. Welcome, Tim. I'm so glad to have you. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, well, I, one of the things that, I mean, you have certainly had an accomplished life and uh, doing lots of wonderful things over the years. But I also know that, you know, um, not every day has been sunshine and roses. And there's also um, times where you've had to deal with some uh, setbacks and things in your life. And, I, it, it, you know, we've known each other for years, but I didn't know some of this information about you. You have, you've lost two children, a wife and a sister which my condolences for one thing, but how do you survive? How does someone survive that type of a loss? What well, look is accepting the good things. And that's what you really remember. Like when I look what I remember are the good things. I don't remember any of the bad times we had with money or uh, with her. She had an addiction to opens and she got through that, but she's one of the lucky ones, but cancer caught up with her and took her back in 13. But you, you just have to remain positive. I got to thank my mom for that. She's a very positive, little bitty four foot ten woman. <laughs> and uh, then there's my blood type, which of course is B positive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, maybe that has something. I don't know. But uh, uh, yeah, you just have to really take things in stride and realize that um, there's always two sides to everything. There's the the yin and the yang, and when there's there's bad, there's something else that happens to balance that out. All of us would have committed suicide years ago, right? So, you know, that's got to be there and keeping that in mind. Probably the most important thing I can tell people is to be present. So when they're worried about what may happen with finance or something, yeah, but how is right now at this moment? How are you? Are you good now? Well, most people say, yeah, well, and the only thing bothers you worried about something that may or may not happen. So just live today. You've heard it a million times, understand the meaning behind it. And that, and that question of how are you right now, usually you answer that a lot. You know, wakes people up and they say, oh, wait a minute. yeah, things are okay right now. Hmm. Well, I, I, I think it's admirable um, that, you, that you have that, um, I guess, awareness or that you've been able to have that type of attitude in life because a lot of people don't and and certainly I can remember as a kid my mother would like ask me how are you and I would go fine but I wasn't necessarily always fine that was just sort of my go-to answer but I think a lot of people you know certainly in fact I, I know someone uh, right now who has dealt with a lot of um, challenges in her life and she you know I, I think she's a wonderful person but I don't necessarily see that she can be bouncing back from it as 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 maybe as she could, I guess. And and I'm wondering if there's anything else besides having a positive attitude. Like, what would you tell someone, uh, you know, who 
you know, to have a positive attitude, but when all the things around them, you know, might be just negative or they're, or they're always failing at maybe different projects and things like that. How, how can you, how could you encourage them? Yeah. Well, yeah, the first thing I say is Tony Robin, you know, my old boss, the first thing he'll tell you in a workshop is change your environment. Very first, thing, because you got to get away from that for some time, not all at once. Like I was with a, with a gal for a year who was an alcoholic, could not turn her around. I met I, hours and hours of consummator, but she was locked in. I'm going to stay this way. I'm not going to try that. I'm not going to do this. Well, you know, what can you do with someone like that? You know? So if you change your environment, and that environment can be as small as you're sitting in front of a computer all day, feeling down, stand up, open your arms, take a deep breath. Tony will tell you that because you're changing the immediate environment as well as moving away from the situation. And that's critical because when you open up and take a deep breath, you can't remain in that position. The second stage, like when I went through uh, the kids that many years ago, I began to run. So I took physical uh, action there, changed my environment, didn't know what I was doing because I didn't know Tony at the time. I knew of him only. But I went out and I ran 12 miles every other day. And I did that for six years until my back wouldn't allow me to do it. When you're in that kind of physical workout, you cannot remain negative. That's impossible. The endorphins are flowing, you yeah. know, and, and as a result, yeah, you come out of it. And But it was a huge help to me. It made me... First thing is people look so much to the outside for help when it's an inside job. And it really is because if you look inside, just be aware of it. The answers are there. And it's difficult, I know, to get there, but it can be done. Because here I'm sleeping on the floor of a, an efficiency apartment. Didn't even have a bed. <laughs> I mean, and I started a business. What, are you crazy? <laughs> and, and it did, did a lot of business. But I think going through that physical development, there's a whole spray I tell on one of my seminars, my sensory goal seminars, of how they can go from that to having a million-dollar business if they so choose, or whatever they want in their life. And there'll be one coming up here uh, in, oh, I don't know, six to eight weeks or so, and I'll talk about that sometime later. Hmm. So change your environment. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know. I definitely agree with that. That is, that's... I mean, if I, I've gotten into, you know, a funky mood or something, it's, yeah, I go, going outside, getting some fresh air is definitely a good way to be. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, uh, and you've probably come across this in working with clients, sometimes the environment is our family. <laughs> so how do, how, do we, how do we deal with that? Well, a lot of times it's your family. I'm one of 10 kids. So <laughs> dealing with that, I mean, this is the one thing you can't do with 10 kids. You can't address their emotional issues because there's so many of them. It's very difficult. You know, you steal a minute here, steal a minute there. That's all you can do. My mom, and she's a very wise woman, you know, uh, that told me many things that my father was. He's an entrepreneur. And the, the first lesson I learned from him is let's talk about compound, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because that's where people are spending their money today. And the other was uh, that he never – Never try and produce a product or a service without knowing what it's costing you to do it because you won't know what the profits are unless you know the cost. Mm. You know, a couple of little things like that and uh, transpired through the years, you know. But my mom uh, was quite the mentor, you know. And I found out through my life I seem to be on that end of most of the time. I'm mentoring someone in, in, in whatever situation it is just because I've been through enough to help if I can, you know. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's. So good. Do you, um, you know, part of what I deal with on this uh, podcast is, is spirituality. So how do you, do you believe in a higher power and how does that fit into this uh, being, you know, your credo of being positive and, and how do you turn to, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I mean, God is, I mean, that's, that's, it. I mean, you don't have God. I don't know where, I don't know how people get along with it. Now, I found out in Vietnam, there's guys that said they don't think God until we got into a firefight. Then all of a sudden, boy, they believe in God. <laughs> it comes up real, real quick because all of a sudden they know there has to be something to save me. You know what? But yeah, I'm very much into that. Uh, uh, we talk, well, I talk every day, and I do mean every day. I talk to him. I, I, I go about, I'm thankful for this, for this, for this, you know, and, and I don't ever ask him to give me anything. I ask him to show me the path. Mm -hmm. And he does. 
you know, mm-hmm. something will show up. And I talk about that in my sensory goals workshop, that if you, if you ask, I mean, it's right there, right? Yeah. Knock, the door will be open, ask and receive. The problem you have with people in doing this is they don't have the faith to stick with that. Yeah. They, 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 and when every time they do, they're putting up another wall. Well, just believe it and go forward and push aside anything, any negative thoughts. Don't get yourself into that. Another thing Tony Robbins will tell you is when you decide to do something, jump in with both feet. Don't think about it because you'll discourage yourself or one of your members will be your case mm-hmm. uh, about do all you can. That'll never work out. I mean, I heard that so many times in my life, I couldn't believe it. So when you tell that to me and say, oh, but now I know, because I'm going to go, I'm going to show them, you know, and that's exactly what I do. You know, does it always work? No, I've had my losses of many dollars uh, in things beyond my control. And then, but the other, on the other hand, to go from starting with nothing, 15 bucks and doing a million dollars in business, um, there's something there that's always available. And it's not just me, you hear stories all the time about how they started with nothing. If you watch Shark Tank, who's the one, that, the guy from Texas owns the football team, he started with nothing. And then there's a guy, the uh, Afro-American guy started his own clothing line mm-hmm. who started making a ties or something in his own little home office, you know? So you don't have to have everything in place. You just need to start. I can't tell you how many times I've handed people a card and said, here's the secret to your success. And I write it on the back of my card. I hand it to them and they laugh when they see the word start, you know, but that's it. You got to start, you know, mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause once you start, that's when you can get some momentum behind you and it becomes a lot exactly. easier to keep going once you start rather than start, you know, trying to get starting from this, you know, brick wall of like, you know, I can't get over it. But once you start, yeah, it's a lot yeah. easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What what lessons have you learned throughout your career that you think would be important for someone uh, who's listening to this podcast to, today that would help them in their life? Probably the biggest lesson, and Elon Musk will allude to this much, I just finished reading his life story, that when you do run into the thing, you don't quit. You stay with it and you stay with it because something will break. Three times in his book on his life, He's to the point where it's over. You know, his whole cruise is, we're, we're going to be out of money tomorrow. And something magical happens. And it's three times in his, in his biography. And I thought, that's amazing. But then when I think back on my own life, yeah, that's exactly what happened. So the lessons are, one, stay with it. Don't quit. Uh, one of the things a friend of mine has his own network marketing company down in Palm City. And he says, the problem with network marketing is, it's the easiest thing to get into because you can get in for 50 to hundred bucks, whatever it is. Right. The most difficult thing about network marketing is actually, it's also easy to get out of. So you quit easy. And you do, mm-hmm. if you had 50,000 up, you would probably stick it out a little longer, you know? <laughs> so those lessons. And the thing is, um, I don't ever call them failures. I stay away from that word and they're lessons and they are lessons. Every single one of them. So you learn from that. I once was doing a seminar, for the city of Casterbury at their uh, uh, chamber, and the mayor was there. And somebody in the audience said, well, Mr. Ricky, you, you've had more successes than I have. Why? And I said, because you haven't failed as much as I have. And, and the audience went, whoa, you know, I didn't expect that. But it's true. That's exactly what it is. So we keep trying. You'll find your way th- through these things, but you just won't fit. You know, you find out what's wrong, what can I do? You think about an airplane that leaves and land who's flying to Chicago. How many corrections do you suppose that system makes before it gets there? Oh. There's the thousands of corrections. So it's the same thing with our goals. Hopefully you <laughs> you get the idea, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's being able to keep going is is so important. And and sometimes and I know I've found this is that even though maybe you wanted something to happen in a certain way and it didn't turn out the way you plan to. But a lot of times, as, as long as you do keep going, is something better comes along. So, so I try not to get too upset by, you know, disappointments because of that. It's like, it's okay. It wasn't meant to be right now, but something else opens up. Have you, have you found that in your life as well? Well, yeah. And that's, I think it's almost always true. 
uh, very seldom do I, don't I find another path like the old story, God closed the door, he opens a window. It's true. Uh, you just have to pay attention. Here's, here's the thing I know is most with people when they watch The Secret. The Secret is based on what the Bible said, ask, receive, believe. Most people think I'm going to visualize it and it's going to be there. No, there's a step in between, which I teach in that goal class. And that step in between is pay attention to what's going on. So I have a thing called VOA, visualize, uh, a visualization, observation. Now act on what you see. Most people, it's going right past me. They don't see it. See, it didn't work. <laughs> You've got to observe what's going on because they'll be there. It'll show up. Mm -hmm. Jack Canfield talks about it in The Secret. Mike Dooley talks about it. Mike Dooley is an Orlando resident, by the way. He lives in, in Windermere. He's been a friend for years. I was his first evaluator in Toastmasters when he first started out. Now he's on his fifth world tour, you know, with yeah. uh, with his, his thing on the law of attraction, you know. So what it all comes back to the Bible, you know, but it get people to realize how, what the steps really are, then you're going to move forward, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I, I do believe taking action that we are rewarded for that, especially, especially when things are, seem to be especially scary when you're really stepping out of your comfort zone, that yeah. that can be sometimes when the biggest gifts are received because you've been willing to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you answer. Just don't quit. You just sit tight. Keep the faith. You know, keep the faith. That's to me is the one thing I see disappearing all the time. People say, "Well, I, you know, I tried and I tried and I tried, and and you know, I'm just going to give up." But did you believe it would happen? And most of the time, they really didn't think it was going to happen. So the faith was weak. So you've got to strengthen the faith, and it's just in there. He's a little more powerful than you are, by the way. So <laughs> let him do his work. You know, and he may hold you up for a while because he's trying to get you ready. With failures, but yeah, it'll get you there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, how can someone, I know you mentioned that you've got uh, an event coming up. How can someone find out more about you if they want to be able to connect with you? What's the, what's the best way for someone to contact you and maybe learn more about some events that you've got? Yeah, I'm connecting a lot of, yeah. Uh, my, my site is Tim Ricky, and it's T-I-M-R-I-C-K-E. There is no Y on the end. There's no I on the end. It's just R I C K E. So it's rickkey.com. And you'll see a few things are rebuilding that site now. And we're setting up, it looks like we're going to be doing the workshops in the Longwoods Village Inn, the old one in, in uh, uh, off of 427. It's been there. I knew the owners, matter of fact, years ago, the family that owned it. And we're going to be in the events there and workshops on sensory goals. And I also have one how to write a book in 30s or less, uh, which I, matter of fact, I'm up to 22 books, Gloria. Oh my goodness! <laughs> From the 18, wow. the last time we talked, <laughs> and 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 and, and uh, so I've got that coming up. I have a workshop how to really network for success. Most people don't know how to do that. I watch them in these networking groups, and nothing is transpiring. Well, I go through the steps that make it more. Instead, are you here to have lunch, or are you here to make do some business? Maybe both. Fine, but do some business. <laughs> you're spending money. You're investing. Just do it. You know. Uh, so I've got a lot of things on business and things I've done over the years, but I've been around for a long time too. So, but I love to work and I'm, and I'm, when I'm writing, if I'm writing any more than one or two days, I got to get out and go see my people, whoever you may be. I, I got to go and see people because I love people and the result is they love me too. It works kind of that way, you know, and I, I love hearing their stories because it's really interesting. Uh, I had a lunch today with a, uh, a breakfast this morning with a gal that I've known for 40 years, I guess. And uh, we're, I actually ended up in some coaching modes with her. She wants to start a new business. And uh, really, she's pretty good at it. She's probably the first time she did it years ago. And she, she's a little, she needs a little confidence building. That's a look, Margaret, you've done this before. And this one is a lot of what you're doing. You can do it just get out, you know, take the napkin and write out the steps. And then we do the checklist. And then we build on the checklist. And pretty soon we're going. She's that simple. Yeah, it is. Most people don't even know where to start. You start on a napkin. How many <laughs> businesses have heard start on a napkin at some restaurant, right? Yeah. And then I'm a big checklist guy. Because you know, they're not going to do anything on the Cape without a checklist. You know. Mm -hmm. And I learned that years ago. I flew with my father. He had his own plane uh, after I was out of the house and he had a couple of bucks <laughs> uh, from Chicago down to uh, uh, Venice, Florida, and he invented what's called the security shutters for hurricanes. 
And oh, wow. on the flight, as we're getting on the planes, we're taxiing with my brother-in-law, who's a co-pilot. Uh, they looked at each other, and my dad said, that Mel, you did the pre-flight. And he said, oh, no, I thought you did. Whoa. Oh, dear. So we pulled over, and they went through the pre-flight, see? So when I kept that in mind, that became the very basis of Tati May made a company that had less than 1% complaint ratio. That's unheard of today. But, mm. the, but the checklist system was key. It took two years to develop it with myself and the Philip Quality Quality College, which they don't exist anymore. Mm. But it worked. It worked very well. You know, Everything was systemized. That's what I try and get my clients to do. Get yourself systemized. Mm -hmm. Got a client right now at the gym, and he gets a fee for uh, people coming in that are on the uh, some of the plans that your insurance company gives you. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what do you get every time somebody comes in? He said, well, they give you two dollars. I said, well, is that much? Said, well, I have fifty people come in a week, and uh, they come in two or three times a week. And I said, well, wait, that adds up some real money. How do you how do you collect? He said, well, they scan at the door. And I said, well, you know, I've been in three times in the last week. I didn't scan; the door was open. So what am I supposed to do? You may, you tell him you got a scan because that's how you get paid. Because you spend a lot of money here. So his eyes got big and bright. <laughs> and and I'm going to be in there next week when I get back from Sarasota. I'm going to see he's implemented that. Because if not, I'm on his case. Because he told me he'd do it. And that's how I coach. I coach on the basis of, you do this? Yes. Will you do this? Yes. Because I don't say you do this. Because then that's me telling them what to do. And I don't want to do that. Huh? Coaching right. is about showing people how they can do it. I can always let it does it for you. So it's a difference there. And coaches a lot less than expensive. <laughs> and you're learning something in the process as a business owner, you know. So we'll see where he is uh, next week on doing that. You know? <laughs> well, I'm sure, I'm sure he'll be better for having you work with him and helping him along. But yeah, I absolutely agree about the checklist. There's nothing more satisfying for me than being able to check something off and <laughs> know that I've got one more thing done on my list of things to do. It's so awesome. Yeah, I tell people that uh, if you want to know where you learned how to get your day started, you do what they, they make you do in the Army. What's the first thing you do in the morning in the Army? You darn well better your bed. <laughs> and then there, but see, the thing is a little feeling of accomplishment there. Yeah. So that, you know, like you talk about momentum, it's just that littlest of thing doing that for yourself. So. Uh, you make your bed. Matter of fact, as you can see, my bed is made. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting in my bedroom. So, so uh, that you know, those doing those little things, and if you get access, you can check it off. There's, there's a good feeling there too. I've always done it, if not on a computer or a phone, I've done it with a pad. I've got hundreds mm -hmm. of pads over the years that I've always had it, and then move the stuff I didn't get done to the next day. That's sort of just being organized. You know. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, to be with us. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I'll make sure that I have your, I'll put your uh, website link in the uh, show notes so people can uh, find out what you're up to and connect with yeah, you. And if, and, if they like, and if they like my email, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, Ricky, my, my, my name, Ricky MBA at gmail.com. All right. Awesome. So if they just want to contact me directly, we can uh, do that. All right. Very good. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for inviting me uh, to be on and happy new year. So I miss yes. that because I'm not going to talk to you next year. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> happy new year to you as well. Yes. As we're recording yeah. this, yeah. we are yeah. bumping up against thank the you. end of 2019. Uh, so I yeah. would like to... Yeah. Remind everyone to make sure if you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet to make sure that you do that on iTunes. That way you won't miss any future episodes. And if you'd be so kind as to leave us a rating and review, that would be great as well to help more people discover Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yes. And we'll on do. oh, <laughs> do you want to add something, Tim? I uh, know. No, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I know about those reviews because you put them up on Amazon and you know what they do? They buy your book and then they see on the street, Hey, I really like your book. No, 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 no. Go to Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And people, they, they don't do it. They forget it's in the back of the book. Click here on the, if it's an evil, click here, take some. And I, I talked to Pat Williams of the magic, right? He's got like 28 books. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we start trying to get the baseball team going. Pat, how do you do that? He's, he's a friend of mine. He says, I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> So he even has trouble getting reviews, you know? So, yeah. yeah. 
It's a challenge. Oh, well, well, I look forward to hearing about your next book when that comes out. Uh, okay. And until next time, I encourage everyone to live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically. Thank you. Bye-bye.